Thank you. Welcome back. So here we go. Um, we just talked about oogenesis, which is the two stages of meiosis, one which takes place um, before ovulation and the other meiosis two, which takes place after fertilization. And so one, one thing that's interesting is that the zygote contains the female mitochondria. And the female mitochondria have small circular plasmids, circular DNA. And so as far as inheritance goes, the embryo inherits only the mother's mitochondrial DNA. So mitochondrial DNA uh, codes for proteins, instrumental and cellular respiration, which happens in the mitochondria. So if there are any um, disorders or anomalies, then all of the children of the mother would inherit that anomaly. The sexual cycle averages 28 days, uh, ranges from 20 to 45. So there is an average for timing of both ovulation, the sexual cycle, menstrual cycle, but there are loads of exceptions, of course. There's a, not exceptions, a, a range. There's quite a range around that. Um, it is uh, hormonal control, the hypothalamus, which controls the pituitary, which controls uh, the ovaries, which control the uterus, so there is a hierarchy of control of hormones from these structures. The sexual cycle has, an, in general, a follicular phase. That's the first two weeks. Uh, menstruation occurs in the first three to five days of the cycle. So uh, arbitrarily, that's where the cycle is, begins, is uh, set to begin. Um, and the uterus replaces lost endometrium, and follicles grow in that two weeks. Uh, then ovulation occurs. The post-ovulatory phase is two weeks. Uh, the corpus luteum will stimulate endometrial thickening. And then if pregnancy does not occur, the endometrium is lost. So there's uh, two phases, follicular and post-ovulatory. And they occur um, with the ovarian cycle and the menstrual cycle. So the follicular phase is all the first two weeks and the post-ovulatory phase, the second two weeks. So in the ovarian cycle, uh, the follicle develops and starts to mature. Ovulation occurs at approximately 14 days, but it's, very, it's quite variable. So that's why if uh, you're trying to get pregnant, that you need to monitor to see when ovulation will occur. Um, it's not that easy to predict, but there are ways. So that's the follicular phase, and it includes uh, two phases known as the menstrual phase and post ovulatory phase, or pre ovulatory phase, sorry. So we'll look at that. The menstrual phase is the discharge of menstrual fluid, about one to five days. Um, there's about 25 primary oocytes that begin developing on day 25 of the previous cycle, and they're transformed into second follicles by day five. Follicular fluid starts to accumulate, and the corona radiata the cells that are surrounding the oocyte have started to divide and grow thicker. Um, follicular fluid is secreted by follicular cells. 
and the fluid is estrogen rich. So in the case of the uh, both cycles, the ovarian cycle, the menstrual cycle, uh, hormones are not just from the brain. Hormones are from structures that are in the ovaries and eventually in the uterus as well. The placenta is very instrumental in um, producing hormones. And the fluid accumulates. Granulosa cells secrete a layer of gel. And that layer of gel is what the uh, sperm have to get through and why they have acrosomal enzymes. And that's known as the zona pellucida. And that is between themselves and the, um, the oocytes. So that's where the gel forms. The innermost layer of cell cells is called the corona radiata. So from the day six, from day six to 14, one follicle advances. One follicle keeps getting larger. Um, it's outcompeting the other follicles, essentially, to a, what is known as a graphene or mature stage. and it protrudes from the surface of the ovary. FSH begins to decline which causes the other follicles to disintegrate. Especially it's known as atresia. And that is on that same graph. So basically I'm just showing the same graph and talking about different parts of it. And of course, we're talking about the ovarian cycle. So what happens in the ovaries here? So that's this phase here that we just talked about. And so you can see that FSH is declining here. And LH has increased a little bit. And now there'll be a spike in luteinizing hormone and a bit of a spike in FSH as well. And that's what causes ovulation. So increased blood flow to the area to the ovaries
causes the follicle to swell rapidly. An enzyme called collagenase weakens the ovarian wall. Fluid oozes out with the oocyte. and is swept into the uterine tube by fimbriae. Yeah, so um, that is ovulation, typically day 14. but it's very variable. Uh, can you ovulate twice a month? Yes, so that is possible. Um, ovulation just takes about two to three minutes. So these are the signs of ovulation. Um, cervical mucus becomes thinner uh, in order to allow for the passage of sperm. Body temperature rises. Point two to point three. Uh, degrees. Uh, so uh, it's best detected in the morning. And at the same time of day. So temperature can vary during the day and with different activities. Um, you can detect a surge of luteinizing hormone with a home kit. And um, some women experience uh, pain, a little bit of pain, has different degrees, I guess, of um, ovulation, it's called Mittelschmerz. Uh, Mittel in German means middle, so middle of the month, and Schmerz means pain, so Mittelschmerz. Um, the most likely time to become pregnant is Within 24 hours after the, after the cervical mucus changes, and the temperature rises. Yeah, so let's take a look at that. But okay, I'll leave that up for a second so you can write it down. I'm gonna have some tea. Staying hydrated. I hope you're staying hydrated. So ovulation results in a spike of luteinizing hormone. So that's the cause, and it's caused by an increase of estrogen from the follicle. 
So the follicle is growing, accumulating fluid, producing more estrogen. The estrogen from the follicle travels in the bloodstream to the <coughs> to the hypothalamus, causes a gonadotropin releasing hormone, and causes the release of LH. So it's all very synchronized. Yeah, so here's uh, ovarian follicles, oocytes, that's what they look like on a micrograph. Here's a large follicle that's um, developed quite a bit. The granulosa cells. Um, the Excuse zona pellucida. Miss Moreland. Yes. Abney has um, she got kicked out somehow, so she's oh, trying to okay. get. Oh, okay. Uh, there she is. There. Good. Thank you. So here is the control of ovulation. Ovulated, uh, sorry, estrogen accumulated in the fluid of the follicle, um, stimulating both the gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus and directly stimulating the release of luteinizing hormone from the anterior pituitary. Yeah. Good. So here's a um, ultrasound. No, it's not ultrasound. It's uh, I'm not sure actually how this is taken. Yeah, but here's ovulation happening. Here's the fimbria over here, waiting for that oocyte, which is in here. And so there is a bit of a distance there. It's not very much, but nevertheless, that's the distance. And very occasionally, a fertilized egg will escape from there. And if the fertilized egg escapes from there and manage to, manages to implant somewhere near the abdominal wall, hormones secreted by a growing embryo will stimulate that tissue, even though it's not uterine tissue, it will stimulate it to be um, placental tissue. And I think it's like 9% of abdominal pregnancies go to term, which is very interesting. So what happens in the post-ovulatory phase? It's divided in the ovarian cycle into the luteal phase and the premenstrual phase. And what's happening there? In the luteal phase, as you can imagine, the corpus luteum is forming from the ruptured follicle. And that's under the direction of the luteinizing hormone. And that causes an increase in progesterone. And that stimulates the secretory phase of the menstrual cycle in the uterus. So if there's no pregnancy, so if no pregnancy, then the corpus luteum becomes the corpus albicans and Therefore, there's a decrease in progesterone. And menstruation occurs. That leads to menstruation. Because the progesterone would maintain the uterine wall. Sorry about the messiness. <laughs> If, however, pregnancy occurs, oh, I better put another page in there. If pregnancy occurs, then the corpus luteum 
stays active for about three months, producing hormones during that time until the hormonal production is taken over by the placenta. All right, let's look at menstrual cycle. It's all taking place at the same time. This time we're going to look at the hormones involved and the different stages. So basically the menstrual cycle consists of a buildup of the endometrium That's the inner layer of the uterus, followed by breakdown and a discharge, vaginal discharge. So secretions uh, from the hormone, uh, sorry, from the uh, ovary, ovary hormone, Secretion includes um, estrogen, which peaks about here, day 14, and progesterone, which increases after ovulation. And then there's a second peak in estrogen. Um, so, yeah, menstruation in the first few days, the proliferative phase when the endometrium starts to grow again, the secretory phase when there are hormones secreted, and the premenstrual phase. So those are the four phases of the menstrual cycle. So, proliferative phase of the menstrual cycle, um, rebuilding of lost endometrium. So mitosis occurs in stratum basalis and it results from estrogen of the developing follicles. And the endometrium reaches about two to three millimeters in thickness. The secretory phase, which occurs after ovulation, is further thickening due to um, largely to the secretion of fluid. So not further my, mitosis, but the accumulation of fluid. And the secretory phase is due to progesterone stimulation. In this phase, it reaches uh, 
five to six millimeters in thickness. And it becomes a soft, a soft, wet, and nutritious a bed available for embryonic development. In case of pregnancy. The final phase is the premenstrual phase. A decrease in progesterone. Um, due to corpus luteum atrophy causes um, endometrial degeneration. At this stage, there is an interrupted blood flow. Causes a blood to pool. in the stratum functionalis, the top layer. And the blood and endometrium form menstrual fluid. Um, and it should say something here. It should say and serous fluid. And is discharged during the first phase. menstruation. And the average loss of uh, blood is about 40 milliliters. Thirty five milliliters of serous fluid. And the serous fluid contains fibrolysin, so there uh, is not clotting. Fibrinolysin, sorry. So it does not clot. Although there can be clotting of menstrual fluid and that can lead to a menstrual cramps. So we discussed the secretory phase, we discussed the premenstrual phase. So you can look at the graph to see 
how hormones change during this time. And the menstrual phase. Yeah. Good. So I think we covered those very well. So I'd like to stop there.